I'm Ryan Schaefer. I'm Tyler Herbley. And this is Newsroom 303. Our first story is about the Robotics Club. Flamos Valley has numerous clubs, including a robotics club that takes part in statewide competitions. It began with the introduction of the Stimbotics class taught by Mr. Klein. We now go to Mr. Klein to inform us about this year's competition. Uh, the competition this year is called Starstruck. Uh, the robots basically have to take these pieces and dump them over the top of a wall and then the robot on the other side is trying to dump the pieces back onto this side. It's a back and forth battle between the robots to see who can get the most pieces on the other side. The club's been meeting twice a week to prepare for the competitions. Basically we they, they work on designing the robot, building it, seeing how it works, testing it, and then uh, if it doesn't work well or if there's improvements, they tear it apart, rebuild it, and keep, keep improving, keep improving, keep building. And it's a lot of trial and error, and it's a lot of learning on the fly, and just experimenting and rebuilding. And now we go to an interview with a member of the robotics club. How long does it take to build a robot? It depends. So this year, we built the robot in two weeks. And that's not what you should do, but that's what it turned out to be. And uh, for the third competition, we actually had to make another robot, which took another two weeks. So we've been building robots in less time than we should be able. We should be doing it. What makes a robot eligible to compete? So there is no weight limit on the robots, but there is a size limit. They have to be 18 by 18, so can't be wider than 18, and the height can't be more than 18. Uh, we've had this, we have pro we have had problems with building these robots 18 by 18 throughout the year, and we just have to work harder on getting them down to size. The Robotics Club is a dedicated group of students. May they continue to change their best and represent our school at competitions. And now for the weather. Rock. As you can see, there's a blizzard right now. We might be going home at lunch. Plants and animals are commonly discovered, but not often is their body part reclassified. The mesentery, a set of tissues that hold your stomach, spleen, pancreas, and other organs in place, has recently been promoted to an organ. We now have an interview with Mr. Kyes to tell us what this means. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of PW and those watching online or wherever you're at. My name is Mr. Kais. I'm the high school science teacher for life sciences. I teach anatomy and physiology, biology, forensics, and then SAT test prep of science. Recently, there was a new discovery of the human body. What they discovered, or found out rather, is that they were looking at the connective tissue around all of the guts, the small intestine, large intestine, um, and they called that the mesentery. They finally figured out that it's actually an organ. Um, and so an organ is basically defined as a group of tissues that function together for a common purpose. And that has a common purpose. So now the nice thing about this discovery is that they're able to put more research into why people have certain problems in their gut or in their large intestine or small intestine or stomach. And they'll be able to focus some uh, much needed research in that area. So guess what? You now have a new organ that was just discovered. Have a nice day. Thank you, Mr. Kais, for that interview. May this reclassification of the mesentery bring more research and bring solutions to many abdominal issues. On February 13, 1945, the siege of Budapest during World War II came to an end. This is a 50-day long encirclement of Budapest by the Red Army and the Romanian Army. Budapest was the Hungarian capital that Adolf Hitler declared as a fortress city. The Axis troops in the city eventually surrendered. Civilian deaths were around 38,000 due to starvation and military action. However, this is considered a strategic victory for the Allies. Palamo is a small town with a small fire department, but they are looking to expand on their department by obtaining a new building. Now we talk to some volunteer firefighters to find out more. The new renovations begin. Over time, the, uh, the fire department has gained members. Uh, we went from 14 to 16, now we've got 20. So the old station isn't big enough for the, uh, the amount of man manpower that we have and, uh, and apparatus. What renovations do you need to do to the new building? Uh, code requires we put up a two-hour firewall separating personnel 
areas from apparatus areas. Uh, so we have two walls to put up. We have uh, a wall to build for our, the muster room where we put our turnout gear and just general touch up. Some roof work, paint, steel siding, stuff like that. You know, just bring the building up to a better state of condition. So first of all, one of the huge advantages to having the new department is going to be the increased space. As you can see right here, when we're coming into this department that we have right now, the space is extremely limited when we are actually going to gear up for a call. Second of all, with the, the three times larger size of the new department, it's going to allow us to train inside, which is going to be huge because that's not something that we were to, able to do in this current station. Thanks to the Village of Puamo and the donations of others, Puamo will be able to receive a new department that will aid in the safety of the village. That is all from Newsroom 303. Have a wonderful day.